before we begin, I think I'd like to introduce the people here at the table, starting with our zoning administrator. Tom Badowski. John Frigert. Uh, I'm Bob Warnick, I'm chair. Carlin Weasel. Uh, Josh Fitzhugh. Matt Gardner Morse. Welcome, Matt. <coughs> yes. um, the um, is there anybody here seeking party status on the Morse application, the subdivision? Uh, if not, um, it's actually the gardener. That's right. That's right. Very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that is the property too. Um, so let me start then by uh, swearing you in and you and anybody else. Yeah, J uh, Jim, please. Uh, anybody intends to give testimony before this board tonight, do you swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, and matters before this board tonight uh, under penalty of perjury? I do. I do. I was say perjury and death, but I don't know where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> 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 New penalties. Tough orders. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, why don't we start by you telling us what you want to accomplish here? Okay. Now, we, we have, let's say, new standards. We're, we're going to probably go through them just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. But if you give us an overview, it would be very helpful. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll just give you a little history. Uh, my parents back in 1999 looked at subdividing the property. And they actually had it surveyed and divided into three lots. And then they found out that they could build a second house without subdividing. So they dropped the subdivision application after they already filed the map. Um, so anyways, they, when they went to build a, they got a building permit for building a second house out on this third lot. And they actually put the septic system in. And it's, uh, you know, a four, four bedroom house, you know, so it's a pretty big septic system out there. And... Uh, it seems to, to the Gardner family that it'd be a shame to, you know, somebody who wants the house doesn't need a septic system out in the third field. And my mother actually planted some raspberries and some other things out there. And it's, a, you know, it seems like it'd be a nice uh, building site for a young family for, you know, the Hamlet of Virgin. So uh, what we'd like to do is uh, we're not dividing into three lots because now there's a septic system for the main house and the second lot. And it just seems like it'd be too crowded and stuff. And uh, so, we, but we would like to separate out that existing septic system and the uh, from the uh, main parcel here, and so it leaves 1.3 acres out there. So, uh, so that's what we hope to accomplish: is to subdivide, the, the, you know, the house and the septic system from the uh, uh, another existing septic system on that third lot. Yeah. And so Go ahead. Right, so the third lot is just the septic system. There's no house. The two houses right. would be on the other lot. Is there two no, houses on no, the other lot? No, they, they had a building permit, and then they, uh, oh. for reasons that uh, they never revealed to any of the okay. children, they never built the uh, house. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's only my one. younger brother surmises, but Dad didn't want to give up his shop in the main house. But <laughs> I don't know. They could have built a garage out in the other place. And I so I don't know. I, I really don't know what. Why well, they'd never, because uh, Mom always wanted a smaller house. All of, obviously, all those kids had moved, moved yeah, away, and yeah. so you know, it was a big house with five bedrooms. So I was like, <laughs> but they never, uh, and they actually extended the, the building permit for a year while they thought about it, and they okay. ended up never building the mm -hmm. house after even put the septic system in. So, yeah, there is just the one house and barn here, and there is, this, you know, there's a septic system for that there, and then there's a septic system Seven. out there. So that septic system is shown on the drawing by um, Townsend. Um, that, that septic system is actually for the main house? This one here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, I was confused because it shows a line between the new property. I wasn't sure what that line was. Uh, which line are you referring to? Oh, that's for the easement because it has to be 100 feet and the property line goes across there. So, you know, whoever gets this, there's going to have to be an easement so they can't do anything in that area because it would be within 100. Oh, um, I see. Well, so that's 75 that's feet or whatever it is of that septic system. So that, see that no. So that's just a line. Mm -hmm. They're giving a radius to the distance from that septic system where the easement would have to be. Yeah. No, no, no dimension shown or anything else, and it's not shown on the... Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's 75 feet. Has to be 75 feet from the uh, subway okay. system. So that's what that's that line is. Okay. 
it's pretty clear that the septic system that's already been built uh, for this lot is right on the lot. Right. Okay. That's based on work by Fred White. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw him last night. Did you? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, questions by the members of the board? Just outline the, uh, the boundary of the new lot. Sure. <laughs> Brought his highlighter, so he won't use it. <laughs> okay. And you haven't thought about any of the further further subdivision of this property? No. no. It was just for a two lot subdivision right. at this time. Where would uh, is there any proposal for an access to Route 12, and where that would be? Or you haven't? No, the yeah. Ayers Road. That's Ayers Road. Oh, Ayers Road. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Route 12 actually yeah. loops around. Right. Yeah, it's right here. Comes this, this is where there's had been a fire at this point. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Did a nice job rebuilding. Thank you. Um, okay. So yes, this is Ayers Road. Yeah. And so the driveway. The drawing by Fred White actually shows uh, the approximate house location. Okay. That sets this other drawing and it shows that the the access. Do you have a, um, an access permit from the select board? No. So you will still need that. Right. The, um, but, this, but this is really just a subdivision. We're just subdividing on the proven. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. When you go to put the home in, somebody will have to get it. We actually, under the new subdivision regulations, we actually talked about that. Okay. And why don't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sort of run through them. The, um, um, I'm referring to page 363, which is the subdivision standards, and um, if it's not applicable, let's just say it's not applicable. Uh, this is obviously a pretty modest event. Um, the capacity of community facilities and utilities, and this refers to schools, police, fire, water, anything else like that. Uh, Tom, you didn't ask this. I, I did. I you asked. Did. Um, I asked um, well. Chief Wolf. I asked Tim. Tim had no issue with it. Tim Davis, road foreman. Chief Wolf didn't have an issue. And I, uh, I believe uh, Chief Dufresne sent me a note, too, that he had no issue with it either. Okay. Questions? So I'm going to run through these because there's a bunch of them. Uh, suitability of the land. Um, there are a couple of sub-criteria here, but... Uh, one question that is under this criteria, which is land subject to flooding. Now, I know lower portions of this property is subject to flooding. Yep. But this is well above that any yes. flood level. Is that yep. correct? That's correct. Yep. Um, but, but how much of the flood is flooded? Just this section right out here, just very close to the river? That's right. And it's more of this part of this part here that gets flooded across there. Yep. Yep. I meant to go look and see how much flooding there was. <laughs> I didn't bother. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. I didn't got nothing to the field at all. No. Mm. Um, design and configuration of parcel boundaries. I don't think there's anything here that's necessarily relevant. Um, uh, but I'll give the board members a chance to look through these criteria. Just as I say, they're new to us, so we're. Right, yeah. we're doing, refers to, you know, access and stuff like that. Right. And buildings and um, arterial streets. Yep. Yeah, this a small subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lot dimensions. So all lots. And this talks about minimizing the number of lots with frontage on more than one road, which is not relevant. Um, minimum standards and zoning regulations and meet those standards. Does for Hamlet. Okay. Yeah, this is the Hamlet district, which is, we've never had a Hamlet before. So. Well, right. <laughs> Since town meeting. Well, we've had a Hamlet, we just didn't have the district. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything there. No. Uh, build, building ele em envelope, and that is shown on the drawing. Yeah. And basically it's using the um, streams as the boundaries uh, for that envelope. Is that Northbrook so-called? Does that run year-round? 
Yep, he does. Yeah. Yeah. So both of them do, huh? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I think in the summertime, that one that's, you know, further south there is this pretty pretty mellow. It's always pretty mellow. But, you know. um, and the next criteria is design and layout necessary improvements, which talks about, and it really anticipates, you know, multiple lots and so forth. It's not really relevant. Street lights, street trees. Uh, I, I don't think any of that's really relevant to this. Okay. Uh, pedestrian bicycle facilities, sidewalks, walkways. I don't think that's sort of, again, multi lot subdivision type thing. Water and wastewater, it's going to be on site water and on site wastewater. Okay. Is the well been drilled or just no. the wastewater? I, just the I do have a question. So I know that, so does that. Is there any issue with the system because of how long ago it was designed, or is that grandfather? How does that work? Well, the permits in 1999. Um, I'm guessing it's permitted and stays. So as long because it's already been constructed. Yeah, it's been constructed, yeah. So, so okay. yeah. I'm just curious if they if there was like a limit to how long. No. Well, I was going to say the size of it and stuff. For I don't think they've changed in the last 20 years. They have they in the have last 20 changed. years, but they uh, uh, and they have changed since 99. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm not familiar with the change off the top of my head, but they have changed the thing. Yeah, but I think the size of the tank, you know, 1,000 gallons is good for uh, Yeah, uh, you, have, you, have, you have a primary field, you have a replacement field. Right. One, it, it, best I can tell, it's still current. Yeah. Did you ask Fred when you saw him? I didn't ask him that question. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been built. I mean, if you didn't, if you got the permit, right. you didn't build it. That's what I'm thinking. 20 years to yeah. you might have to say Then you might have to update it, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty confident you're in good shape there. Okay. Um, firefighting facilities. I just before we pull, move on, you may just uh, just determine you know, how what size bedroom home can go on this septic system, and uh, because that's what that's what really predicates at least today. I don't want the ninety nine. Um, the size of these things. So, right. so when you go to market it, you, I would personally, I would have that in hand and say, look, you can build an X amount bedroom home on this property. And it was designed for a four bedroom house. So that's, I, I would just get a copy of that permit. And it's just okay. that's what Didn't I. Didn't you include the pocket permit? I think so. I thought I had the copy of the permit. Uh, yeah, there was something in that. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow I managed to lose it. Here it is. Yeah. It's an old permit. There's only one page. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two pages. <laughs> time to look it up, but I believe it's limited to 600 gallons of sewage per day. So I don't know what the current design that's, standards are. That's about two bedrooms. Two, two people per bedroom at 70 gallons a person. Yeah. Because, yeah, if the house hasn't been built, would they limit it to the size of the septic now? Because the house yeah. hasn't been built, right? Yeah. Even yeah. though the septic isn't permitted. Correct. Okay. The building permit will be issued for a house that's based on design. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So when he comes back to the zoning administrator for a building permit, um, that question would need to be answered. Yeah, so. Okay. <clears throat> Public and private utilities, uh, not relevant. No. Landscaping, uh, I would say it's again not applicable. We got a fair amount of landscaping there now. Right. <laughs> uh, rose control, and 
there are provisions in these regulations that will need to be adhered to. So, but there, are, you know, it shouldn't be any difficulty. This is a relatively level portion. I was say it's flat. At least the top of the site where the septic tank is and the house site is level. Well, the whole the, that this particular subdivision is pretty level. It slopes a little bit down towards the river, yeah. but it's pretty level. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's up a little bit in this corner, and then it, it's there's a green here for the septic system, and then it slopes down a little bit here. But it's pretty flat. I keep thinking behind the, the primary house where it really drops down. <laughs> right, yeah, that's right. That's, that's where we have the walkout basement and stuff. Like that. <clears throat> the um, uh, road control, stormwater management, again, we're not. It's just a single, you know, single family. Um, uh, there's obviously requirements for monuments and corner mark, lock corner markers. Um, I failed to mention this. We're reviewing this for final plan review tonight. Um, we've already had sketch plan approval under these bylaws with um, Tom. And you have a letter to that effect. And what's this next one? Construction and maintenance and necessary improvements. I don't think it's applicable. Yeah, that's no, not applicable. Uh, Care to the area and settlement patterns. I say it's consistent with those. Yes. And soil preservation. Applicant must stop boiling, stop boiling, topsoil removed. This will pertain to any permit that you get as part of the ordinance. So, um, uh, there's more, <laughs> which is a sec separate section on procedure, and just talks about final plan review. And uh, we're on four, um, four fifteen. And more specifically, you're right, we're on 418 because that's the final plan review. Oh. And um, and in here, of course, it says that um, there's a reference to uh, figure 405. I'm not finding the time. What's reference to figure 405? I don't see it. I know it's in there somewhere. Uh, it's on page 4 20. Oh. 4 20. Well, I know that's where that 405, that day, figure 405 oh, there is. It is. That's where 405 is. But where is the reference that says it must, must meet all applicable standards of 405? There, I've got 4406D on page 18. The development review board must issue a written decision that includes findings of fact that address each of the applicable criteria in figure 405. So, and this is something we're wrestling with, and we just went through a whole bunch of criteria, and here's more criteria in a different order. But wait, this is for preliminary. That preliminary? And we don't do preliminary if it's. A minor, or do I mean? Yes, uh, 4406 is preliminary. How does that apply? Does it apply? Because this this is under. Um, yep, yeah, it is under. Well, again, I have to, I would have to reread these. Yeah. Under old subdivision regulations, you had to comply with all the provisions of preliminary, all the preliminary plan review criteria, just to get the final. So right. it would presume to be required. And I reviewed those with the applicant's surveyor. These criteria? Yes, we came up with this map based on... Oh, God, these are more confusing than I thought they were. Yeah. Um, I... Well, who's fault was that? Right <laughs> <on that. laughs> really? Who wish I hadn't said on that, boy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I did. <laughs> You were right there with me. Yeah, well, I was, I was disagreeing <laughs> when I was agreeing, you may recall. Um, 
the um, I don't see anything here that we haven't covered that's that's relevant. If, if, right. if, if, if anybody, would anybody disagree? So it Take says an applicant those. for a minor subdivision approval may skip the preliminary approval process and submit a final plan for review and approval by the DRB in accordance with the provisions of this chapter. That's what they've done. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, it's, I think the standards still have to be, but that would the assumption is that they, that's what yeah, that's been done. Yeah, based on the letter we have. Again, with a minor, just a lot of these are not applicable. Not applicable. Right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what amounts to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Okay. I, um, so the only question I really has been answered, which is what is that septic tank, septic system out in the middle of the field? <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that belongs to the original house. Right. And what's the easement? So that, that's clear. Um, were, there, were there any of the easements that we're not aware of, like utility easements? No. Across the property? No. I couldn't remember where the power lines were. Uh, they're actually on the other side of the other road now. It's see the poles there. Yeah. I knew, I knew they moved over somewhere in there. But they go right along the road there, so. Yeah. Okay. So they moved the highway right away. Right. Case. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, have I missed anything? I think you have. Um, page 2.4. Oh, uh, I was hoping you didn't remember. I know. I never did read it. This is the whole. Um, we actually have to find on that? Well, I, I think we need to get some direction to the applicant here and what what we, we would look for in, a, in their final plat. I, I believe what this. How I interpret it is this pl this plat will have on it two lots, and I think uh, each lot will have a notation that it can only be further subdivided by X and Y. Um, and I, and I, I think we need to determine what X and Y is, and I, and I think the simple solution is just take the minimum lot size. Um, and uh, for this district and calculate that out to, to this. Uh, they'll never achieve that amount of density unless there's public sewer coming through there, but um, you know, who knows? Maybe, Some of it's also in floodplain and stuff too. So, it's so, of, yep. so, so, yeah. so uh, you know, this is, the, this is our first trial run here on this one. <laughs> Did you bring your calculator? Yeah, it's easy mm -hmm. enough to do from from that from that standpoint. But, yeah. I thought this was something that didn't get applied now. You, you, you look at it when somebody comes back at a subsequent time. I, I'm just the, mm -hmm. during the discussions of the planning commission. I, I clearly remember that anytime there's a subdivision, then there would be a note on the plat referencing that That's lot it. one has X amount more capacity and lot two in this case has has additional capacity. Carla? So the two, 2006 C on page sub paragraph 3 says, must be shown on subdivision plats filed as required by section 4408 and documented in zoning permits and development approvals. So it sounds like there has to be some kind of a calculation. Yeah. Yeah, because we were trying to account for the subdivision and then the subdivision and then the subdivision. Yes. <coughs> So have you done? I mean, have you have you done those calculations? No, it's, it's I think sixteen thousand square feet. It's easy enough to do. It's so when we just put it in, in an approval of a subdivision, when we just doc because it says in zoning permits and development approvals. So yeah. wouldn't we put that in the findings and in the? Yeah, but I just want to make sure we all agree that that's okay. that's that's the methodology that we're going to use here, is that we just take the gross remaining area divided by the minimum lot size, and I think it's 16,000 square feet in here, that comes up with a, a value of how many lots can be further made in any one of these particular lots. Don't you have to also leave some area around the septic system and that kind of thing? I think that's, that, 
I don't that think would be we, the maximum. And, and I don't think we are trying to, to predict future use or technologies and things like that. You know, <laughs> right. it, it all changes. But, but it would be on both on both lots. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think I think that would be the, what we would have to do. Yes, based on that sentence right there. What was the purpose of that? Just to give people warning that 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 yes. where are they. Well, because remember, we in the in the previous subdivision regulations, there was no time frame or no. And no, it doesn't that also have to do with that as far as what what further capability there is of subdivision. That, that's and if and if somebody um, during a um, during this hearing said that this one point half of this is going to be put into conservation, then you make a note on that plat so that on that that you know X amount of acres has been put into conservation. So therefore, you only have you know why amount of mm -hmm. further the, uh, the the problem I have with all of this is if the bylaws were to change between now and a future date I get it allowing for a much higher density or a much lower density um, uh, well, you it would seem to be that <laughs> this would be a futile exercise yeah. which would be superseded by future regulations Unless you argued that because it, you had done the calculation and put it on the plot, it was grandfathered in, and you and the, you were entitled therefore to use that density in the future, yeah. even if it changed. Conversely, uh, if you had public sewer down there at a future date, you could do all of this. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yes. Not, not not likely, but <laughs> right. and, and for what it's worth, uh, this really came from the constituency and not from the planning. These were individuals, two in particular, one in particular that was pretty adamant on, on this um, provision. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm sure you don't object because it's going to be a number that you'll never achieve. Right. <laughs> um, oh. And what, the, what I, the problem I have with it is it's a number that's not going to be achievable because of other constraints, as you point out, septic system locations, uh, all the uh, floodplain. There's all kinds of things that really include probably much more than one more lot. <laughs> well, but then in the findings, or at least we could make a statement that this is seen as maximum based on current regulations. So keep in mind, this is only applicable if there's a residential density in the district, and not all districts have a residential density. Right. So it's the Good village, point. like the hamlet, it's the town center, it's not in all districts. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's I forgot about that. But it is in the hamlet. Yes. <laughs> Where does that say that? So it I can... says it right at the top of the. Near, uh, the first part of that where the diagram okay, is. Okay, yep, yep, got it right here. I'm just highlighting stuff that I always got to remember. Because <laughs> we took out a lot of the residential densities. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, we, we can even say that this is not this is not a statement of approval for that. Right. This is simply a, right. a calculation. In accordance with this section, yes. we're we're calculating, yeah. and that's it. Not that we're approving use for it. And uh, I know we're digressing here a little bit, but the conversation at the planning commission at one time was taking in steep slopes and, and wetlands and all that stuff, and then was going to do a calculation on what's doable, mm -hmm. what's not doable. So uh, that's all gone now. So, so this may be just some of the, the residual from all that conversation as well. Because you, you, you know, when we do this division, I mean, uh, the, the lot you're, you're proposing. Three. Three? Yeah, maybe three. four. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no way no. for three, even with public sewer and public water, you couldn't do it. No, no. You don't want to buffer around the streams and stuff. You could, because it's, it's based on dwelling units. Dwelling units, yeah. So, ah, yeah. So what's, you know, yeah. Mm, so what's okay. Okay. put a three story yeah. in there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We told him the buildings won't be. Just trying to anticipate growth. I would have to take the time to read this more thoroughly. I don't understand it. I think it tries to get at the issue of density, not necessarily lot size. 
shrink by just how dense the population yeah. would be in this particular lot. <coughs> but I think lot size drives density here. So. Well, as you point out, it could be a multi-family. Yes. Twelve or something. Okay. Yeah, I think we've done. So, so we need to sit down and do this math. Yep. You want to do this math now, or we want to do it later? I, can I think we do it I can before the... Yeah. yeah, I do think it needs to be couched on referencing these regulations and... Referencing uh, that section. And the other constraints, site const notwithstanding other site, site constraints. Right. Okay. Wonderful. I'd rather not read that. Don't, don't, don't stone the messenger here, Bob. I know, I know. Well, you warned me about it, but I sort of... I did warn you about that. I warned you all about this. Remember, we'll find things that we need to tweak. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, Mark, this is tweakable. <laughs> well, I think... Well, Although it sounds like, I think since there's a big advocate for this particular one, it might be a little tougher. Huge advocate. Who is that, Ron? What's he? Doing? He's an engineer. What does he know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, are we any more? <laughs> are, are, is there any other comments, questions for the second? No. I was actually going to make a motion to. Mm -hmm. Tom, do you have any more surprises? No, I do not. <laughs> Good. Good. I will entertain a motion. Okay. I move to close the hearing. Second. Motion made, second to close this hearing. Um, is there a discussion on that motion? All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And we, this hearing is closed. We will issue our findings with certain math calculations. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to Mr. Bond. Mm -hmm. and judging by your submission, you've been having fun for a while. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a first name basis with the state of Florida. For my clarification, all your communications and dealing have been with VTRANS, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, when you say the state of Vermont, that's that yes. be a whole bunch of other Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that, that, that's a, a general term. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, I don't recognize this gentleman. Is, are, are you interested in this application at all? Uh, yes, I live next door. You live next door? Yeah. Are, are you seeking party status on this application? Um, party status means. Uh, you may have something questions. You may have some comments you might want to enter into the record. Yes. If you want those to have any standing in a, in a possible appeal, uh, you should request party status, and you should be sure to make your issues known uh, here tonight, um, so that if for some reason you disagree with the decision of the board, um, yeah. you can appeal it. Yeah, I'll, I'll seek party status. Your name, please. Eric Burkholder. Eric, and you put down you know, your name and address and all that information on the sign-in sheet? Uh, I put my name and phone number down. Yeah, you need to give us an address, too. Okay. Can, can you just clarify that the application is for an amendment, so that all we're reviewing... Uh... Right, but it's for an amendment. Um, without, this, without the amendment, he hasn't got a permit. Oh, from the state. Okay. Yeah, well, the state, yeah. Okay, because I was just going to say, because if we're, if we're just reviewing the wall. state never approved. Okay. Never approved, never granted him a um, access permit based on our previous application. Okay. Am I correct about that, Jim? No, what the, no, the way I understand it is uh, the town here approved the application and it had to go for the state because it's on the state highway and so the state reviewed everything that the town did and also what they wanted to deal with issues such as the railroad uh, such as the actual construction uh, 
uh, process, so on. So you, you have a letter of intent, but it's based on yeah. conditions which were not previously approved by this board. The, the, yes, the one thing that it was not approved by the board is the law. Yeah. Well, the, more uh, than that. There's just, a number of seconds. Now I can clear, clarify this. So on his original application for his building, uh, Jim had an LOI and had this entrance constructed. He, uh, he, he got that, um, and then about a month or two months later, he came back with the original application for, for uh, putting the, the office building in here. Good, bad, or indifferent, uh, we assume that that LOI that he got two months ago was still good and valid for this. Um, after we, after we, ish, after the, after you guys issued for, for this office building, the state had a concern over this, this access. And so Jim was coming back for this retaining wall, and um, he, he was talk, talking to VTrans at that, that point. Uh, you remember he pulled this application, he went back to VTrans to get the LOI for this and then to clean that up. And that, that, that's where we're at. The, the uh, if, if I might enter this, the, the original approval was for a, a residential. It was for the mobile home, and the 40-foot wide access was granted from the state, that one right there, and it, and it was for residential. So once um, I applied for the building, the 24 by 70 multi-bar, purpose building. We don't know what it's going to be used for at this point. But once I applied for that, it was determined by myself and uh, future buyers that that is going to be a commercial operation. And that's why it, we were required to remove the mobile home. Because once you get the commercial operation, there can't be residential and commercial on the same parcel the way I understand it. So the state said that we have to change that access to a commercial. So the, they've reviewed everything in that aspect with this here and they've uh, right here on the front page it, 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 that's the first thing that they uh, talk about on the state's permit is the fact that they are granting a commercial access. And then in the special conditions, they go over the construction of the retaining wall with the railroad and also the building and that it would be done according to a proper procedures, especially with traffic coming in and off uh, the Barry Mopay Road. That's the way I understand it. Is that right, John? Yes. Yeah. So um, this really is a it's an amendment, but it, the ability for this person to be a party, I don't see how that has any bearing on it. Well, the reason, I'm not saying he can't be a party, I'm, I'm asking for clarification on what he's a party to. If he's a party to just the, the retaining wall and cannot appeal the original permit, or if, that's, I just think he, sh he, just, he should have that clarification. I'm not, and, I, and now that you've, what, well, whatever I, you've I, just I said, I'm confused, because I'm not sure what I, I think he can appeal. For com I think he's this 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 he needs this approval from this board to have a commercial building here. He has the approval from us for residential, based on the original LOI. No, uh, we have the building too. Though you, uh, originally I had a permit for residential, but but the, uh, the permit from here from the town this one here for commercial is is for commercial. Yeah, correct. So I've, uh, I've got a permit from the town f for the commercial. But you don't have it from the state. Uh, yes, now I have it from the state. I have them from both. The only thing, the only reason I'm coming back is because the state has appro approved the retaining wall and your original commercial approval on this one right here didn't have the retaining wall, wall in it. That, that's my take as well. Right. So there's, there's nothing inconsistent in the state's access permit, which is conflicts with the uh, permit that we issued to you for the commercial building? No, absolutely. Did they make you change this access 
at all, or do they just? No, ju just the way it was written. Well, so, yeah, they did. The, the building has moved. The building has changed its size. Okay. Just, just enumerating the changes in this drawing. Building it, the building has changed its size, so it's a different building than the one we approved. Okay, the stormwater management provisions have been required. Those are new. Okay, there have been a, a, you enumerate them in your own application here. The, the number of changes that have been required by the state. Am I correct? The, the uh, well, I, I've indicated all the changes on the actual uh, plot plan, the drawing. Yes, and and uh, all of those aren't necessarily changes. What they're doing is they're just additions. Um, ex example, they wanted uh, me to know where the snow storage area was going to be. Well, I, I, real, I realize. Yeah, that wasn't a change. Good. That's just an addition. So you're right. Half yeah. of them are probably changes, and half of them are additions. Yeah. But the change of the building size is different. Oh yeah. It's less than what less. Less. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but it's different. Yeah. Okay. And the axis, you know, so it's it's still I. I, I yeah. yeah. This individual has requested party status. I, no, I, I'm owner. saying he can have party. I'm just, okay. I, I'm just questioning what's appealable. Okay. Yeah. That's and, all. And I, really, I think. I mean, that's the only reason. I'm, that's the only reason I'm making this point. I'm not questioning that you have the right to have party status. I think I would want to be clear on what I was, what I was actually a party to, <laughs> because I'm not sure that it's to the original I, approval. I, but I, I, I you, think I maybe that's you, a I question would, for the court. I don't you know. correct me if <laughs> wrong, and maybe it would take somebody it, else to do that. But if we don't approve these changes, he doesn't have a uh, LOI. Without an LOI, he hasn't got a project. Well, exactly. The, the state in in. I know, but I'm just saying our approval. I, I just, I'm, I'm just. It's, yeah. it's an open question. I don't know, Bob. I, I think that if if we don't approve the retaining wall, he still has a project because he, he has approval from us for commercial building. He just. The reason he did this retaining wall is to try to get some extra room back here, right? Right. So he, he could say he doesn't need that extra room and, and not do the retaining wall. Okay. He, he, he could pull this application right now, and he would have a permit from the town of Berlin. But it's but it's there's he has a permit from the town of Berlin, but it's inconsistent with the terms of the uh, uh, transportation. The site yes. plan we approved is not the site plan that the V Trans has approved. I, I agree with you, but but. We may be in, this, this. This may be immaterial. Right? It, 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 uh, uh, it, but the last thing I'll say is, so if he pulled this application mm -hmm. and he he came, comes back to me tomorrow and says, Tom, I want to make this building two foot shorter. I can do that as an administrator. I was going to say making the building smaller it's doesn't require issue. us. No. Yeah. Right. Right. Adding stormwater management doesn't Correct. require us. Yeah. I don't think right. that's arguable. I, I'm just part of this is my own. Thinking yeah. this through, like what yeah. would you actually be able to? Yeah. So anyway, that was it's, just... it's, it's worth noting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to dismiss it. I, I think, yeah, yeah. it's where's where we're we going. I certainly would like to hear what the buddy property owner. Oh yeah, so, no, and, and there, he definitely, you know, party status is not a question. Yeah. I just. Okay. So, does anybody object? No. To receiving party status. So. Okay. Um, and you will provide. But I do need an email address for you. Yeah. You need okay. Um, okay, um, we need a motion on that. Motion for what? Party status? No. Probably not. No. Um, so, uh, because he meets the criteria for party status. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, the way we're going to proceed is, is the board will get to chat with the applicant first, uh, but before I leave the subject, I'll come back to you see if you have any issues or questions with regard to what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, uh, Jim, we've sort of half covered it already, but why don't you tell us why we're here? <laughs> 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 Debating why we're here. <laughs> why are we here? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably repeating myself, so I'll, I'll try to be brief. But uh, uh, originally I had a access and a permit for residential, and then we decided to uh, get rid of the residential aspect of it and and put up a, a building that somebody could use commercially and so 
obviously that status had to be approved by the town and at that time I came before the town and, and the town issued the permit for the building. Mm -hmm. I was all set with this and I went to the state and they reviewed it thoroughly and in fact they reviewed it four times uh, and I, I met with state officials down on, on the lot. I met with railroad officials down there. The state and the railroad got together and anyway they've decided that uh, this is a a doable project. They're, they're happy to have it on there. They've, they've uh, approved this. The way Nate Covey put it, he said, we agree with the town, we're approving the building. We have just added some changes to the site plan and maybe added some small, some small minor things. The reason they put it in an LOI is because they don't want to turn around and give me full permission without the, me coming back to the town and making sure that the town agrees with some of the changes and additions to the site plan and the permit in general. They, they want to make sure you guys agree. And uh, that, that makes sense. I mean, all of a sudden, I come to you guys, and I start construction, and you say, well, geez, uh, we didn't even get a chance to review this. So we maybe don't agree with on that. So they, this is actually, the reason it's a draft is they're waiting for you to approve their permit. And he said, if they change a lot of things, then you're going to have to go back through the process again through the state. If they have, this is the way he worded it to me, he says if they have some minor changes, like Tom says that he, he can approve those, it can be personally done by Nate, and he'll just change a couple small things on their permit to agree with the town. But ultimately they want both permits to be uh, coincide and, and agree. So. To answer your question, I'm back here for you to approve this permit, which would also include the site plan. Which okay. has been really the retaining wall and the stormwater structure. Yes. Yeah. A reduction of building size with this. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did is I took your drawing and this drawing and went through them thoroughly and found every little change on there. And I simply numbered the changes. I started up in the upper left-hand corner and I went clockwise the best I could around the drawing and I made notes of exactly if a person they, looks at I the two drawings. They, put, they made you put the stationing for the railroad on there. It, exactly. Now that's not a <laughs> I surprised you, there's no stationing for the uh, yeah. Route 302. Where's the station for Route 302? Station you missed something. Yeah. The station. Um, when you lay out and design a road, uh, you do it in 100 foot increments. Sections. So basically, every, every you know, you're, it's station uh, uh, 2300 plus 50, oh, 2300 plus 85. Yeah, yeah, it's it's depending on how far you are down the road. 271, 280. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for the state. Yeah. See, now you're, you approved a plot plan that doesn't have the stationing on it. So you could turn around and say, listen, I don't want stationing on there. I just, I just, I just want to know what you did to get them so angry to make you do this kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'm willing to do right now uh, is go, and I, I don't think it's going to take us very long, just go right down through the numbers so that we're all looking at the same blueprint. Uh, and you should have two prints. Yeah, I have, I have one question for you. Side by side. Why are you doing the wall? The, the wall slopes in. It, it doesn't have the, the soil there to give uh, an appropriate distance from the building where it would be level. I mean, I don't want the uh, property to go out six feet from the building and then slope down to the tracks. Whereas if I put a wall in there and 
the drainage and the fabric and everything, and then I can go out to the wall, and then it gives a, a, a proper, a steady width down the back of the building, because that's the proper way to do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because you could have just had that slope uh, I could, gradually I down, could have, yeah. and, and, and I mean, that's the way it is now. Yeah, and if, if I had to go back, uh, you know what, I'd probably say, I should have never asked for that wall. No, I, that, <laughs> that, would have been my, that would have been my assumption. So, so yeah, I, I didn't know you had something planned for that. Trouble. You have something planned for that area. I mean, it's just, so you created a level area between the building and, and the railroad right of way, mm -hmm. but for what purpose? And now it's taken up by stormwater structure. Well, the stormwater structure is actually at a lower level. Yeah, and it's it's beyond the end of the building. So yeah. it's it's um, that you could do this without the wall. Yeah. Depending on the client mm -hmm. in there, if there was like three offices, uh, a person could drive. Down the back. Clearly, clearly it makes it a nicer site. It just, but it's it's an expensive addition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I thought there was just maybe some other subtle reason I didn't appreciate here. Um, okay, uh, we're site plan criteria. You've addressed all the criteria for us. We appreciate that. Um, the. Um, I guess let me stop there first. Does anybody in the board here have questions? Well, I, 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 it's really a question of the process. I can understand the situation where you are, but, which is to say you've got a permit from one body, which is the town, and you've got some conditions that the transportation agency says they want to see in order for you to get access to the highway, and now you're trying to reconcile the two together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think in some ways that that's... It's not our job to try to reconcile the, the state permit with our with our permit. It's really your job to say if uh, if you can make these changes on this plan, then I then it will I'm comfortable or I feel confident that it will be okay with the town with the state. So you're not so you reconcile those differences by just us addressing something. But we can't. You said to us, for us to approve the LOI permit. Well, we can't approve, that's their permit, it's the state's permit. I don't think we have to approve that permit. And it's just, it's, I know it's difficult because you got two different groups, which is, you know, and you're trying to reconcile the two together so you can go forward with the project. In fact, our permit is conditioned upon his getting an LOI. Right. Well, not the LOI, actually getting the permit. LOI is just a letter of intent to right. issue a permit. Right. okay. Only these subject conditions. Yes. Uh, our, whatever permit we issue, um, whether it's the previous one or this one, it's always predicated upon receiving approval from the state for access. Right. Yeah. Uh, in this case, the state really is two separate entities. It's the state highway, and it's the state railroad, which is complicated because it isn't the state railroad anymore. It's, it's sort of the Washington County Railroad, but uh, which is, you know. And then, and so I think part of it is, that it, it, it sounds like, is that some of these nuances, let's call it, to the plan to satisfy the state you can you can sign off on those yourself. We don't need to bother with those. That's just a question of fine. Can you sign off? It's great. Done. So we should focus on those issues that you couldn't sign off on, that are 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 non-starters for the state, and then we'll try to address those particular ones. And, and Josh, to me, that's the retaining wall and the stormwater structure. Yeah. So in that sense, we don't have to go point by point right by point by point through all of these. No. No, we could just focus on those that, that need. No need mm -hmm. our attention. Which is why I asked the one silly question I okay. asked, which is why the wall? Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, it's, he's, he's got a fair amount of investment in this. He's going to have a structural engineer to view the design. Oh, no, it's ex expense, the truth. Um, and so there's, there's a whole bunch of things. But um, um, may I suggest this, though? I, I, we've, we've sort of, we're getting not ahead of ourselves. If we, we want to go through the criteria. We want to look at the, what's, what's germane. Um, I agree with you, Jeff, um, uh, Josh. We don't want to necessarily review why the stationing for the railroad, although I've got to ask why you know, I know why they did it. <laughs> what does um, that mean? Stationing? Uh -huh. It's just indicating where you are on, on a railroad track relative it's to the road. road it's, it's just the numbers. See those numbers. numbers? Those station numbers? Oh. I'm sorry. I apologize. And correct me if I'm wrong, but railroad stationing is different than highway stationing. Yes, no. it is, because the curves are not done on a curvilinear basis, they're done on a tangent basis. 
So it, 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 it just a no, there's a piece of trivia. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I I so they use, they, the use, they use they <laughs> use the cord instead of the circle. So that's amazing. They, that. they do that. <laughs> wow. They they do. Really do. I thought you'd find that exciting. Yeah, that's. What is your concern and what is your issue, sir? Uh, just I don't really like people going in and out at night and. With uh, Dunkin' Donuts, it's pretty bad right now. And uh, it's, uh, if, if there was more people driving in and out at night, it would be uh, hard for me to sleep and whatnot. So I'm just concerned about that. Uh, so you're actually, concerned about the hours of the day? Yeah. But uh, I, I'm just here to really find out what's happening. I'm not. I don't want to like uh, interfere with this. Where, where is your residence? Is it residence? Is that where you... um, it's across the street. Over here? Yeah. Right so here? 602 is the. You can ask, wait, this, this map doesn't show. It's very, it's right across the street from the new potential development here. Oh, here is Erickson Burkholder? Yeah. And now formerly Erickson Burkholder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right across the street. So is it the um there's another house that just went in that has that they're working on. Oh now it's next a jet, to yeah, it's about in my ha my property. So you're are you off Evergreen Drive? No. I'm uh Why am I not picturing house there? I'm on the 602. Oh. 602. 302. Yeah, 602, yes, 302. Is that, his house address is 602. Oh, well, 602. 602, it's on route 302. Okay. Um, okay, so when we get to that, and you certainly need to speak up to the issue, uh, we're not particularly approving any particular use here. We're just approving a commercial use. Um, and as, as everybody here is well defined, we're really, use has already been previously approved. And we're 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 def we're proving changes to a site plan. Yeah, that, that that's I you know I didn't know that. I just got the letter, so I just showed up. Yeah. You know, At some future date, on. some person will and it won't probably be Jim. Some person will purchase this from Jim, uh, or lease it from Jim, and propose a use at this place. At that point in time is where I think you're interested and in, it comes really in. Yeah. What is this going to be? A, uh, is this going to be a 24/7 thing, or is it going to be a, uh, uh, nine, to nine to five? Right. And and is it going to be a lot of traffic, or is it going to be very little traffic? And he's not applying for any of those things at this point in time. He's applying for a commercial building to be constructed at the site <laughs> to be a use to be determined at a future date. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's it's good to raise your concerns. Yeah. So, um, so let's go through the criteria if we can um, and determine which are applicable, uh, recognizing that we're only really talking about. And, and oh, I have one other general question. You you have some water in there. I think we determined there was no substantial change. We didn't actually calculate the amount of additional impervious area. I think we recognized you were turning a lot of impervious area to green area, mm -hmm. um, and that you were not necessarily adding a lot of impervious area. Mm -hmm. The state apparently took issue with that and decided you need the stormwater management. Is that correct? Well, I, I think that's I, I think that's a general policy by the state. They anything on a commercial highway like that, they want to know about the stormwater. They want to know where it's going, where it's coming from, and where it's going. And that, that's the way I understand. They said, we got to have those answers. So. Uh, well, it's because you're actually discharging to the railroad property. That's right. That's yeah. the issue. That's the issue. Yeah, that's that's what it, it is. could be. It's, yeah, uh, that's what it is. OK. Um, so and of course, you know, just, just parenthetically, when we, you we proved this permit before, it was under an old subdivision and, and you know, regulations. No, it was. Correct. Different yeah. standards. Uh, yeah, okay, so, um, uh, 
parking and loading areas. Um, what page are you on, Tom? I'm on page 320. This is site plan standards, and that's what we're doing, site plan review, we're not conditioning this review. The, um, uh, and uh, and you're, you're right, we're looking at this under a new set of regulations, but he's not proposing, he's not, he's not proposing a change. I, right. I suggest that really, he's, it, it's only the changes that would be subject to right. new regulations. Right, Was yes. that, that fair? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, any change in parking and loading? No. Uh, any change in the amount of parking? No, I don't believe so. No, I think, uh, I mean, we've got both drawings, uh, so we can certainly confirm that, but uh, to my knowledge, no. Okay. The, um, I'm, I'm, you've given a written testimony to a lot of this, Jim. Yeah, we've got a lot of it. But a lot of it says, <laughs> I, with all due respect, I've read it, it says approved or see above, you know. It doesn't really answer, doesn't really, really answer the issues. Um, uh, we've done a good job, but I just, you know, there's a few of these I would go through here. Besides, I'm still using this as a learning experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the learning experience which we have to prove very quickly. <laughs> um, the, um, Uh, it's again, we're talking about loading areas, uh, shared off-site parking. And again, there's no changes from what you proposed previously. Access is changed, but is there actually dimensional change? I don't believe so. Is there dimensional change in the access? No, it's the same. Okay. So it's it's just that it's the use that's changed. Yes. In their mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, now. Setbacks, does he meet all setback requirements? It does. In the new ordinance? It does, yeah. We even talked about the, uh, the no, new ordinance, unlike the, the, the old ordinance, allows uh, DRB consideration of waivers on commercial property. So we, we even talked about moving this thing back 12 and a half feet and, you know, getting him more space. But Jim Watt did not to do that. But in the end, I, I would like to discuss that. Uh, not necessary now, uh, and I don't want to change it at this point, but I would like to be able to say to a, a, a client that, because like Tom says, that you have the 25-foot setback in the back, and if a, a, a buyer doesn't need that 25 feet and he only needs 20, then instead of a 24 by 70 building, he could move the building back towards the railroad tracks another four feet, and he'd end up with a, a, a 28 by 70, and he'd still fall within that 12 and a half feet. And also... Well, you still have to meet the waiver standards, though, requirements. It's not, it's not a gimme. It's just yeah, yeah, no, no. I realize he'd have to go through the process, and it may not be uh, approved. Oh, yeah, I understand that totally. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, I'm sort of going through page 22 right now to see whether any of these are applicable. Um, and, and you've addressed them like the parking aisle and so forth. None of that has changed. And again, all of that is the same. Um, the um, design and construction maintenance standards, layout, erosion and drainage. I, I am confused about drainage. Um, where is the drainage on this? It's only because I can't remember. Where's the drainage on this site go? It, it, you have this new retention facility. Yeah, it, it drains north to south, so that would be from the Montpelier end towards the Berry end. And f from the middle of the building, it would drain east towards 302, go towards Dunkin' Donuts, and then end up in the detention pond. And then from there, it would go down to the ditch along the railroad tracks and through the pipe. Uh, anything from like the middle of the building and on the back side of the building would simply drain towards the tracks. So about half the light lot will go through this potential facility, is that? Well, 
it, it's actually, uh, see the state has such a, a large right of way. So if you don't include the state property, then you're right, it would be half of what I own. But then the state owns about the same width between me and the 302. So if you add that on, then all of a sudden it's three quarters of it on the front side goes towards the detention point. In the calculation of the impervious area, did you include the um, state-owned property? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that had to be. Yeah. Uh, Ro Rob's got those calculations on the back. And, uh, and I say that, I mean, I could be wrong, but to, to my knowledge, uh, that had to be included. So if you look at that section, it says the town of Berlin strongly encourages the applicant to use green stormwater infrastructure practices to filter and infiltrate stormwater. And then if you go to page 30, 349, now I'm treating this for, with respect to the previous application too, there's this, all this um, language about stormwater management plan. So if there's a total amount of impervious service on the lot exceeds 50% of the lot area, and it must exceed 50% in this, so this parcel, right? Most of it is impervious. Um, must have been a stormwater management plan prepared by a licensed professional engineer demonstrating that green stormwater infrastructure practices designed in accordance with the current Vermont stormwater manual will be used to manage at least one inch of rainfall from the new impervious subjects services on the lot so the post-development rate of runoff flowing off the site does not exceed the pre-development rate. Is that, is that, is that complied with all? With having that? Well, it's, it's it, it, without seeing the actual calculation, we, I, some reason here, um, I mean, he's converting an awful lot of paved area, what is currently paved area, impervious area, to, yeah. to grass. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Um, that's, that's already been done. It's already been it, done. It's, it's, there's no paved area down there. Okay. No, it's all... Uh, it's, he's done that already. Oh, he's done that already. Yeah. But, but what was there before your last application did include impervious area, did not? There, there was no pavement, even on the, the initial one with the residential, there was no paved area. Because you took it out and, and... No, there was never any there. Never any there? No. no. Well, well, when they put this, uh, the sewer, that's when that pavement got taken out. No? No. There was, that, that lot's never had pavement. Okay. I thought it did. All right. no, it's, if it did, it was before my time. Never. So, so if the applicant must obtain a state stormwater discharge permit, the town of Brown will consider obtaining that permit to be evidence that the applicant has also met the standards in terms of this section. Mm -hmm. You're not applying for a stormwater discharge permit from the state of Vermont. So, okay, so then it says this applies to any increase in the amount of impervious surface. This section. Yeah. 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 What, uh, what you might recall is the the pad in under the mobile home was a concrete pad, mm -hmm. and that was taken out. Yeah, that's that's the only hard surface that was there. Okay, I seem to recall that there was a fair amount of hard surface between the edge of the pavement and the property itself. And I say hard surface; it was, was I, it don't, I don't mean pavement. I mean gravel. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't wasn't it wasn't grass. Right. You, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm recalling. So, yeah. But, yeah. But the state has asked you to provide the stormwater retention. Right. Uh, they they wanted calculations, and so that they could go over it themselves. And they've been on. They've been over those calculations. He has provided us with a stormwater management plan. Right, right. And it's, it's a stormwater management plan that's been suggested to him by B fans. I mean, yeah, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out who the really is. Part of their, the state's permit here, uh, the whole 
permit, they, 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 they've stamped each page on the bottom, and, and this is stormwater here. And uh, so their stormwater people have gone over that. Uh, so it's based on the impermeable, impermeable area increase. They, they use the Q10, the 10-year storm event, which with an increase of 1,614 uh, cubic feet of water. And then they've calculated the volume necessary for the basin. Oh, okay. So it's actually changing more than that. Again, is this germane? Because we're only talking about impervious surface now of that retaining wall. I mean, that's the new. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think we have time to review that. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. So yeah, going through all these criteria, I would think we're going from from the perspective of those two items. Really? Well, except for the, the stormwater retention structure is a part of the change. Right. Yeah. It is. And so the question is, is right. what, why, yeah. why, and what is it accomplishing? Mm -hmm. And if the calculation suggests what it's trying to accomplish is exactly what the, the what the manual requires, mm -hmm. which is the first inch of runoff uh, in a in a, in a uh, ten year event. There it is. So. Okay. Okay. And and that, it would be a green structure, right? The green green. Well, I, I have a little problem with that. Some people have an idea of green structures yeah. is, is is non structural. This is a basin. Yeah. So it's got a not it's got outflow. Um, but it also it's just, it's just an overflow. There's no pipe, right? Right. Just just an overflow. Just an overflow. So it just holds water and allows it to percolate into the ground and. But, it, just, but it's pervious. It's perfect. Yes. Yeah. So that's a, that's I think a definition of a green structure. Well, I think it is. Yeah, it, it is. I have a problem with some of that because I, no, I get it. Because you know I get to a point where it's pervious until it becomes impervious. All silver. Yeah. I, get it. <laughs> no, I get that. Um, so I've lost where I was. Um, Three twenty-two. Yeah. Loading access. We passed this here. We're asking erosion and drainage, and, and, and I just want to be certain because you don't show the drainage pattern on the drawing. But so what's missing from this application is, is where is all the water going? I don't think you you correctly identified. Yeah. Uh, certainly, all half of it and, uh, is going. The whole parking lot is. Where is that going? Um, I would uh, say 80, 90 percent of the parking lot is going on the front side of the building. Uh, between the building and 302 into the basin and then uh, like I say the other 10 percent would go on the back side of the building. Mm -hmm. um, next criteria is snow storage and you've identified where snow storage is going to be that's one yeah. of the changes yeah but it's not a change really it's just an addition an additional note yep um, Just electrical vehicle charging. What's this next section? Access and circulation. Previously developed sites. Access and circulation doesn't only apply, right? We've already. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is all about circulation. All of 3203 is access and circulation. Mm -hmm. Three yeah. two hundred four is landscaping screen, screen, screening. Yeah. There's been no change to that. Three two hundred five outdoor lighting. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what it would do the wall under. <laughs> well, landscaping is it's a form of the wall. Yeah, it's a form of landscaping. Mm -hmm. You're using engineered stones. Engineered no. Blocks. Blocks. Yeah. Keyed into each other. Yep. The ten foot high, that's just the maximum height. This it's considerably less of that. No, I mean I I could I mean I can go higher, but that's all I need is ten feet. Yeah. 
Yeah, ten feet worth. Well, I'm pleased to see you had it analyzed because you see at around 10 feet, I start thinking to myself, you, somebody reading this know what they're doing before you build a 10-foot high wall and expect it to stay there. Yeah. Right. Hell, I get, I get queasy around five-foot walls. Yeah, retaining walls are... Uh, how many times do you see private residences and they put in retaining walls in there? You're leading. Yeah. This 3205 is all landscaping, is it not? You're not changing your lighting? No. You're not requesting signs at this time. No, no. Page 348 holds full page of erosion control practices. That's for poor construction. So, well, but you're putting in the okay. a wall. Yeah. Isn't, that? There's a, isn't there a section on wall? 3000, oh, 3001. On walls? On walls. Shouldn't we be looking at that? <laughs> that sounds smart. Retaining walls. Is a section on retaining walls? Yeah. I knew we had something specific to retaining walls. <laughs> Three one. Three one. Three one. Three dash one. Okay. Yeah, it's on the fences. Walls, yeah? It says, all oh, African must design retaining walls as follows. All retaining walls over six feet in height must be designed by a registered professional engineer or a licensed architect. And this one has been? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all retaining walls more than six feet in height will require condition use approval. Somebody missed that. Damn, zoning administrator. <laughs> <laughs> they would require what, huh? Conditional use approval. This was warned for site plan approval, not conditional use approval. Uh -huh. um, there are a few additional criteria, few more criteria under conditional use approval than there are under site plan approval. And the height of the retaining wall must be nothing about the aesthetics of it, though. No. 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 Uh -uh. Uh, and there are not two retaining walls. So. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just they would rather see you step them than. Mm-hmm. But it's certainly true. If you're getting twelve foot or more, you really need to be thinking of stepping them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so it's under retaining, under criteria 3001E, uh, you would appear to be meeting all the criteria. Uh, have you, but we'll have to have to schedule it again for additional use. I guess the reason for that is that if, if you were building a retaining wall and you're, you know, you got an immediate neighbor here, you don't have a railroad. The railroad is not going to complain about a retaining wall. In fact, they wanted it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They approved it. They approved it. They approved yeah, it. The, so. the state is the one that's. Uh, yes. And I don't think there's anybody else who's going to, have to be concerned about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it has been designed. Um, so, going back to site plan review criteria, then, um, a lot of these are not applicable. They, um, uh, roads, pedestrian bike facilities. Water, wastewater. Again, no changes. There's really no change in anything except for the addition of the wall and the stormwater and the reduction of size of the building. Yeah. Yep. So under 3210 stormwater management, we already did that. Conditional use don't apply either. So 
Pardon? The conditional use standards don't apply either. I don't think, but. Well, I'm going to go find them. Where are they? Are there, are there additional standards? 351. 351. Well, Passing character of the area. Facilities? Character of the area, yeah. Oh. Now, the additional permit did not contemplate, going back to the interested party, the original permit did not include any time limitation did it? Uh, we have a two-year permit mm -hmm. and with a one-year one year extension. No, but I meant a time of time of um, oh, operating hours. Operating I hours. Don't, I'd have I don't I'd have to go in here. Do you have the original permit? Yeah, right here. yeah I do it right here. Wouldn't that be related to the use? Would we have you wouldn't you would keep think that? so, yeah. yeah. There are very few restrictions on time of day on Route 302 in this, in this zone. So, the lighting, was this lighting approved for any time of day either? Again, you're not proposing changes to lighting, you're not proposing changes to the days of operation, because I don't think they were even considered. I think the, the, the issue that, that you might have, sir, would be when, when and if a use is proposed for the site. Permitted use, right? You know, that's oh, it doesn't. Uh, trigger notification. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dunkin' Donuts, 24 hours a day? Uh, they're, they're till uh, 7 at night, or, I mean 10 p.m. around. Mm -hmm. And then they have deliveries around midnight. So. Mm -hmm. They do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, someone shows up around midnight, drops off donuts. <laughs> it's 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 it was suggested in the original permit 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, sure. That's the original permit? Yes. So. What was your other question, lighting? No. Lighting. Do we have... We're trying to reduce lights being on all night. Uh, somewhat hard to do because security is important. So the original permit uh, contemplated um, seven to nine. Seven to nine. And he's the, you're not asking for changes to that. Right? No. I'm very frankly, the size of the building is such that we're not talking about a lot of, a lot of traffic in and out either. No. No other than the parking spaces. So. Okay. It's not like a drive-through. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> yes. generates a lot more traffic. Yes. Or, a, or a bank, a bank, you know, drive through bank. Yeah. Any drive through, yeah. But that would be regular hours. Yeah. yeah. Or less. Well, unless you have a meeting. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, okay. I see no changes over in the wall and the thing here, and I, I think we covered that. I think. Um, um, Am I missing anything here, Mr. Zoom Administrator? I don't think so. I, that was, I thought the two things that, and again, the, in my mind's eye, reducing the size of the building is something that can be done administratively as well. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, he, is proposing, he is proposing a safety fence on top of the wall, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in the very end, I would like to just throw this out at, at you, a, a couple questions that I had. So you let me know when you're ready. <laughs> ready. Ready. Uh, let's see. I think I 
that one right here. Uh, I'd like to just, just hand these out. And of course now, I'm not gonna be able to find them. That's all your stuff, right? Did you, you had, you brought up a, a yeah, something yeah. in my office left uh, there. No. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. <clears throat> Thank you for taking care of me, Tom. Yeah. Now, th this is pretty basic, but because right. I'll, I'll let you hand those out if you want. You can just rip them right off. Oh, I just want to top each other? Yeah. Uh -huh. drawing, you'll notice the original, <clears throat> if you look at the, the plot plan, the original building is up at that point, the 50 foot. This drawing is simply, I've darkened in the building and I've actually moved it back away uh, or towards the railroad tracks and, and, and you look at the note over at the right, it says seven feet, which and originally the setback on the back side is 25. So if that building moves back seven feet, now the setback is only 18. Now I realize this is all, it's a, it's a variance. I, I don't know if this is the time yeah, or place this, to do this, this. this. If you're speculating on, on yep. whether or not we would approve something else, it's inappropriate it's because we right. really had to be warned. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, no, no, that, that, that's fine. Plus, you uh, want to look at the waiver criteria because uh, there has to be. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's fine. We can talk about it. Come yeah, in. Yeah, talk to Tom. Did yeah. you have, what, yeah. well, did you have a question? Uh, uh, no, no, no. You can't I, ask us about what, what if, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just indicating that uh, because these are all new, that it, it looks like, see, originally I needed the 25 feet, but now it, it's possible that I could come in and request a wa waiver. Uh, we, we need to sit down and talk about it. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll sit down with Tom. I'm, I'm fine with that. I think Carl is right. You need to look at the actual criteria themselves. Um, the criteria presumes that you can't build a structure otherwise. There has to be some limitation on the site. So. That would require the variance. Or the, or the yeah, it's not, yeah, so, so look at that. If, if, at if you want to do that, yeah. we'll warn it and we'll we'll hear it. Yeah. Okay. But um, we don't want to speculate and, and now. It won't. It won't be myself that's doing it. I mean, I'll, I'll probably have a yeah, you, you know yeah. a purchase and sales agreement, and it'll be subject to uh, they're they're gonna maybe want to go back and and move it back or something like that. So we'll we'll work it out. Yeah. We'll work it out. Yeah. The, um, any other questions or comments on the board? Uh, Join us, sir. I, not on this, but I do want to talk before you go to deliver session about uh, the thing that I need some direction on. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, I want to ask the. Oh yes. Yeah, sure. Did you have any further comments you wanted to make? No sir. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you being being here. Um, so, I move to close the hearing. Second. Motion been made and second to close the hearing. Um, the discussion of that motion. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 The hearing is closed. The testimony is closed. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have one other item of business tonight. That's the second item I want to talk to you about. Glad to be out. Okay. Um, and Thanks that is the minutes of our last meeting. So I had one thing. Oh, I didn't have time. This is not the vote. So the minutes say the 
planning, uh, it's about the planning commission. The plan is to get a town vote on the ballot for the zoning regulations when the town vote is on the school budget in April. It's, at that time, it was an upcoming vote, but we, we were going to miss the April one. So I just propose that you say, um, uh, in an upcoming school budget vote, and not. Well, did we say April then? No, we didn't, because we didn't. We know it wouldn't make the April. April. This is on another business, right? Yeah. I can't wait. May, may I see your uh, Carla, there's some stuff I brought there that pertains to horses over oh. behind you. Oh, oh, thank you. So, <laughs> you have to go see her sometime. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely want to. Uh, Look it over and throw it in the circular file. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Yeah. If you don't want, but something that's interesting. I'm sure it is. I'm reading lots of So, so <laughs> what, are you, what are you proposing for change? Just that at the end of the sentence, it says, um, when the town votes on in an upcoming school budget vote. I changed it to uh, the plan to get a town vote on the ballot for the zoning regulations in an upcoming school budget vote. Yes. Yeah, so Excellent. 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 Any other comments on this? I can't remember what I have. What? I can't recall either. I think I made them, but I do. Go back to What I do is, is um, share my comments. I just don't share them with everybody because it's being inappropriate. Can make changes to all those rooms of like in public meeting. And uh all right, but you what well, you can send up the changes as long as we don't discuss them. Great. Yeah. We just don't copy all. No, you can send it to all of us as long as we don't have a conversation. If that that way we're aware of what you're gonna propose. Don't you think? I think it's just if there's I, mean, I was I was advised you couldn't make changes to minutes unless it was a public meeting. Well, it's not making changes, it's proposing, proposing changes, changes that you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what Bob's saying is, if you're doing that, don't copy everybody, just send it to him. But what I'm saying is, I don't think there's any reason, I mean, Josh can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's any reason we can't see it as long as we're not going back and forth and going, no, don't do that, yes, I agree with that, as long as we're not conversing about it. We can't all read it? I would think we can. I don't think, I, that way when we're here, we're, we, we've seen what you're proposing, and when we discuss it, if we see an issue with it. Yeah. But that would be my take. I'm pretty sure I got this from Paul Gillies. I know you're not supposed to have <laughs> email conversations, right. which and, is very and, different from sharing a version of something and reading it on our own and then coming together to discuss it. Sure. But, but you, it, however you want to do it is fine. <laughs> So you're talking about the March 5th meeting, right? Sixth. Uh, March 19th. 19th. Okay, that's why I'm having trouble finding it. We approved the March 5th meeting. Yeah. There you're right. Maybe the word. The only change in there was a the spelling. Okay, yeah, no, I had no comments. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about it because I had no comments. So um do I have a motion to approve yes. the minutes as amended? I move that we approve the minutes as amended. Put it on second that. Second that. And uh, discussion? All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we approve the minutes. And you had. So uh, I had a, a, a call from a concerned constituent. Um, you may recall that in our prior zoning regulations, there was no. Um, residential lighting standards and but now in these regulations there are uh, residential lighting standards the, the main thing is that residential lights should be fully down shield you know um, so the, the uh, a neighbor uh, 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 an individual called me and says that they had uh, a neighbor that has a spotlight pointing on their property. Um, and I said, well, how long has the, the light been there? Has it been over 15 years? Is it, you know, something that's grandfathered? And he couldn't speculate on that, but he speculated that, that 
the light was turned from from a 45 to a 90 at, at his house, and his house is like 300 feet away, and uh, believes that that would be a violation of, of, of this ordinance. And my take is that if it's not a brand new light, that it's just they just changed the angle of the light, it's not, it's not. But I said, I don't know, I'll talk to this board and get some guidance from, from you folks on this. and see what's the, the best way to, to proceed. I, I, I said I'll gladly call the, the neighbor and see if they'll, you know. Um, has, the, has, the, has the neighbor has the, already talked to his neighbor? I, 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 I think there's a little bit of bad. Extension, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of bad blood, I believe. I see. Between okay. the neighbors. I think we've heard about this before. It was a street lamp before, but oh. now it's a, oh. it's a a floodlight. Hmm. So I don't think that this applies, but that's my that was my take. Maybe if you guys could read it over the next yeah. couple out couple days and just get back to me out and I'll just Okay. Yes, I, I again I it looks pre existing light, I don't see how and very frankly, I'll be honest with you, even if it wasn't a pre existing light, it's just going to be one of those nightmares for a zoning administrator. Yeah. That provision of bylaw. I, I, I sympathize. I do too. Because because it, there yeah, are could, more people that have got spotlights shining in the wrong place. Well, well, if it's being done purposely, then it could be constituted a nuisance. And that's, that's, that's a, a different thing. And, yeah. and I, so, I think that's what he's contending. Yeah. And, yeah. But then there's a civil remedy for that. Again, I don't. I think that's out of the purview of the zoning right. administration. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Really is. And take it up with the police department. Yeah. Anyways, okay, but but I, I'll get back to. Them, but I, take just take a you know a, a, a week. Does, or so. our, does our zoning bylaw contemplate that a individual wants to install a light at their residence? They have to come and get a permit. There are exempt permits if it's under a certain amount of lumens, in it, but it still has to be fully downstream. That's a requirement. But then how do you know that the requirements being met or not being met if there's no application process? By complaint. Complaint. Yep. Yeah. Or by. Yeah. But, but again, for uh, and what I will do as conditions of any new uh, residential permits, home constructions. I will put this as a as a condition, yeah. so so it's you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of why we added this is because we've heard about this, yeah. these complaints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The worst the worst one I can think of on top of my head is if you drive down um, across town road toward my place, just as you join Route 12, there's a house on the right that's got two spotlights that shine right. So it looks like a car coming at you. <laughs> well, if you're coming down, it looks like a car. But if you if you if you if you're driving there, you literally get blinded. Because yeah. hmm. they're right at the road. Wow. It's their safety hazard. Yeah. So they're they're pre existing. So the other thing I want to mention is that um, the planning commission had a public hearing on some changes to these zoning regulations. Yes. Um, they have uh, the planning commission has agreed to to forward them to the select board. The select board has, has advertised a public hearing. So since it's been advertised, now we're operating under two sets of regulations. They're minor oh. changes. They're minor changes. <laughs> Don't tell Christy that. They're, they're minor changes. They, they're, all they are is just some frontage issues. Uh, I doubt if they're gonna come into play here, on, um, but uh, I'll send you those changes so you can see what they are. Too, too bad you couldn't have worked it out so we have three regulations. <laughs> <laughs> then we could have had a majority and minority <laughs> report. <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Oh, good. Is there any other items coming before this board before we go into the liberal session? Nope. All right. Um, we're, we're done for the night. Thank you sure. very much. Yeah.